All right, welcome to this next uh, demo uh, application uh, in this series uh, about implementing the Scott CPU on an FPGA. So today we're going to be looking at memory circuits. Uh, we're going to be looking at three things. So the basic memory, one bit memory uh, that's described in the book on page 24. And we'll be also looking at uh, the register and uh, finally uh, the RAM uh, of the CPU. So for the memory circuit, the way we have it hooked up, we have this first switch here, which is set to um, the input of the memory. The output is set to uh, this first LED right here, and uh, the set button uh, is here. Let me just reset these switches here. So the first thing that we can notice uh, is that the output is on even though the input is off and we haven't pressed the set button yet and uh, in reality this output value is actually random so the way the circuit is designed in the book it uh, creates a loop and uh, when this is implemented in a, in a real situation it turns out that the, the, the initial value is uninitialized and it can give sometimes a 1 and sometimes a 0. So in theory this is not really a problem because uh, generally you set a memory to a specific value before you use it. However, there are certain cases in John's design where it's required that the startup value be 0, namely the uh, instruction address, address register and um, the stepper. So we'll see uh, how we will deal with that uh, when we get there. But now I'm just going to demo the memory circuit. So basically we have zero here. So if we set, we are now at zero. So if I turn on and off this switch here, uh, there's no effect. I can set it again and it's locked in. Just uh, what we would expect from a uh, the one bit memory. If we move now to the register, it's basically the same thing, except that we have this whole bit to work with. And to uh, let the value out, we need to use the enable button that is here. So I'm going to turn on these four uh, bits here, set them in the register. Now, if I press enable right here, we see that the value comes out, even though I have reset these buttons here we are really uh, showing the value that's captured inside the register and finally uh, we move on to uh, the RAM demonstration so what we're going to do here is set up a pattern uh, using certain addresses and certain bits uh, and show that everything is uh, recorded at the proper location the way I've set this up in this demo is this bit here is the input value uh, this byte here sorry the input value for uh, setting uh, the RAM and the MAR is controlled by the this byte here in this setup the S uh, wire of the MAR is uh, set to 1 so it's always on so we just have to set the value and it's going to go in so I'm going to go ahead and program a simple pattern here uh, of specific addresses and uh, sequences of LEDs. So for zero, address zero, we want zero LEDs turned on. So we will save this. We will go to address one, where we will have one LED turned on. We will go to address two. We will have two LEDs turned on. We will go to address three, three LEDs. And four, finally, four LEDs. So we have set all these values inside uh, the RAM. So now if we go back down using the enable button, we should see uh, the corresponding value. So now we have address four. So we will see four LEDs here. If we go to address three, we should see uh, three LEDs. It doesn't matter what the values of these bits are actually move down to address 2, 2 LEDs, 
address one, one LED, and finally address zero, no LED. So we can see that using the MAR, we can address different locations in the RAM and uh, program them using uh, the other inputs. So this uh, basically concludes the, the setup uh, for the, the memory demonstration. One thing I want to mention here is also I was possible to um, create these circuits in the way that is described in John's book. I have to fight a bit against the, uh, the FPGA software to do this. Now, creating loops like I mentioned before and creating uh, circuits that are, that are not timed, large untimed circuits like this is sort of a no no when you use the FPGA tool that they what they want to bring you towards is use uh, namely timed circuits when you want to do uh, sequential circuits and also to use the built-in uh, uh, resources of the FPGA there is RAM inside this unit and the uh, the software is trying to tell us that it's best to use the RAM instead of creating our own distributed RAM using uh, NAND gates. It's still possible to do so, but uh, we have to uh, disable certain warnings and uh, work around a bit if we want. But that's okay. Uh, the goal is not to make a necessarily an efficient system here. We just want to uh, have fun and work with the John's design. So in the next uh, demo, uh, we'll be looking at the code quickly for, for the RAM and then we will move on to uh, the clock and the stepper and we will see if we can get those to work uh, on the FPGA. So see you soon.